Good day everyone. So in this discussion, I'm going to give you a brief overview about industrial and organizational psychology, defining the field, and we'll be able to take a look at the course overview of the things that we're going to talk about in the entire course for this semester. Okay, so for every lesson that we're going to talk about, there will be a recorded lecture and I will give the link to you. And um, I'm going to talk about the syllabus later on, as well as the rec recommendations from the government, which is the CHED, and why do we need to study I.O. and its implication in your licensure exam. So let us begin. Okay, so first let's answer the question, what is I.O. psychology? So at this point, I'm guessing that you have encountered the various fields of psychology, such as abnormal psychology, theories of personality, cognitive psychology, biological psychology, and there are a lot of subfields under psychology, but for this semester, you're going to learn about IO psychology or industrial organizational psychology. And this is a very applied subject because other than the theories that we are required to talk about in this course, we will also talk about how do we apply these theories into practice, particularly in the workplace. And you need to study I.O. because I do believe that everyone who listens to this lecture, eventually you will have to work or you have worked before. And believe it or not, I.O. will always be there. Okay, You will always encounter problems in the workplace. You will always encounter issues. And your background in psychology will help you make your way through the difficult workforce. It will help you make your way through your day-to-day -day encounters. Okay, Because I.O. psychology is the branch of psychology that, that applies the principles of psychology to the workplace. And to be more specific, here are some examples. So we can apply principles of learning from your theories of personality and theories of learning and cognitive psychology. We can apply them to develop training programs and incentive plans. We can learn how what's the best way to make the employee return what they learn, retain what they learn. We can reward good behavior. We can punish bad behaviors. We can reward adherence to training. We can give incentives to people who do well on training. We can give incentives other than money. Because when we talk about I.O., we believe that people are not only motivated by money, there are other things that may act as an incentive, such as fulfillment, growth, development, recognition, etc. Okay. Other than that, we can apply social psychology to form work groups and understand employee conflict. Conflict will always be there when there is organizational development. Not all people believe in the efficacy of your organization to make its way through changes or development. You may believe that online classes will not be feasible. There's no sense in applying online classes. So you need to apply your principles of social psychology for you to be able to become a convincing leader. Okay, and principles of motivation and emotion are used to motivate and satisfy employees. So this would be the advantage of having a degree in psychology. Well, in some schools, they have Bachelor of Science in I.O. Psychology, but I think that most of you who are listening, listening to this lecture is taking A.B. or B.S. Psychology, okay? And I.O. is one of the core subjects in our field, okay? But when you go to graduate studies, you can take a master's degree in I.O. Okay, you can take a PhD in I.O. Psychology and then basically I am giving an overview about the things that you're going to learn from the subject or from the field if you decided eventually that you want to take um, a graduate degree in I.O. Psychology. So this is one of the concentrations of psychology in the Philippines as well as in other countries. So in other countries, they have what we call an I.O. Psychologist. In the Philippines, we have what we call Certified Industrial Organizational Psychologist. Okay, and what is in the job description of an I.O. Psychologist? Let us define the tasks, the responsibilities of an I.O. Psychologist. So an I.O. Psychologist, the, the field I.O. Psychology relies on research, quantitative methods, and testing techniques. Okay, therefore, it's important that you connect this subject to your other subject because in I.O., this is not a standalone subject. You need to have basic knowledge in psychological testing, statistics, as well as research. That's why statistics is in the first year in the Philippines um, curriculum 
curricula uh, for psychology so that as early as first year you'll be able to understand research and understand the meaning of research in various fields. So IO psychologists are trained to use empirical data, meaning they know how to interpret data, they know how to do research and interpret research and statistics rather than intuition to make decisions. Because sometimes our intuition does not match with the reality. What if we're thinking that assert that in order for you to motivate someone, then give a very high compensation? Well, that makes sense, but not all the time. Because not all the time, people are only after the money. Sometimes, even if you give them enough compensation, okay, they will still look for another company because they want growth, they want responsibility, they want enhancement in their careers. Okay, and we will learn more about that when we go to employ motivation and commitment. So, IO psychologists are not clinical psychologists, okay, who happen to be in the industry. IO psychologists are not in charge of therapy. They're not going to help you with your drug abuse problems. What they can do is that they can refer you to someone who has skills in counseling, counseling in the workplace, or to a psychologist. But the definition of, of an eye psychologist does not include therapy, okay? But there are some instances here in the Philippines where in an eye psychologist may take courses in therapy so that they'll be able to perform these functions as well, okay? And a factor that differentiates IO psychology from other branches of psychology is the reliance on scientist practitioner model. It means that if you are in the field of IO, expect that you will be able to fulfill your potential as a scientist who will do a lot of research. It doesn't make sense if they have an IO psychologist in the workplace, but they don't believe research. Okay, and this field, this subject will be filled by research. And you will see a lot of my examples will be coming from research um, when we go to the specific topics in IO psychology. And other than that, you're not just a scientist, you're also a practitioner, which means that you apply whatever you learn from research. So you'll be able to defend your methodologies you say for example that i am i wanted to propose a training on mindfulness because it was proven by these studies that mindfulness would be beneficial for say for example healthcare workers hence it's benefit would be helpful for our organization if we have a committee that will arrange mindfulness interventions okay but if you don't go to the process of looking for literature or conducting research, then how are you supposed to defend your decisions as an IO psychologist? Because most of the time you act as an advisor to the executives. As a psychologist, what can we do to solve our problems? What can we do to motivate our employees? Okay, that's why most of the time IO psychologists are consultants or they're like advisors. Okay, and they, most of the time, they can also be found in the HR department. Okay, so as you know it, in IO psychology, there are two subfields, industrial and organizational. And the difference is that the industrial psychology subfield is the HR or the human resources side of IO. And we will talk about industrial psychology in the first part of this course. In the first part of this course, here are the things that we're going to discuss. We will begin with job analysis and then followed by recruitment together with interview techniques. We will talk about selection after that performance appraisal and then training and development. So basically I'm walking you through our our course requirements, our course outline in this subject, okay? Our syllabus. So we will begin with a very important process of job analysis. And when we say recruitment, this talks about attracting qualified individuals to work for your company or to apply for your company. While selection is selecting from a pool of applicant which of them would be able to perform the functions of a certain in a certain position. Performance appraisal is performance evaluation. So how competent are you in the position that you're holding? Okay, should we replace you or should you keep doing um, what you're doing? Or do we need to look for a new manager now? And then eventually, if we determine that you have some weaknesses, we can allow you to undergo training and development. So this would be the coverage of industrial psychology in our subject. But in the latter part of the semester, we're going to talk about organizational psychology, more of theories, more of research, and how do we apply these theories into practice. We'll begin with employee motivation, and together that will be um, that will be extended by job satisfaction and commitment. 
then eventually we will move on to leadership and group dynamics. Then we will close this discussion with a two-part lecture in organizational development. Okay, so expect that this will be the flow of our course for this semester. So the HR side of IO is industrial psychology, while organizational psychology is more of a research side of IO. It's more of about behaviors. Sometimes it's also known as organizational behavior. Okay, so there are also other fields in IO, such as ergonomics. And when we say ergonomics, it's about the design of the equipments of the apparatus that we interact with like our chair our chairs in the workforce may not be as comfortable as we know as we have now if there's no ergonomics okay the face mask that you wear the face shields that you wear during the pandemic will not be effective if you if we don't have the field of ergonomics so ergonomics even though it's not really something that we will talk about this semester I'm just mentioning it because it had a lot of important contributions to IO psychology. Okay, so why are we talking about IO psychology in this semester? So one of the reasons is that the Commission of Higher Education in the Philippines have made it one of the required courses for you to take if you're taking a bachelor's degree in psychology. So IO is defined as a course providing an overview of psychological concepts, theories, and research findings for effective human interactions and performance in the workplace. Okay, and here are the suggestions by Ched as course contents, history and development of IO. That's why I required you to read the first chapter of your book in IO. The title of the book is Industrial Organizational Psychology and Applied Approach. And the author of the book that we're going to use is Michael G. Amott. Okay, and most of the lectures that I have in the subject are anchored from his book. Other than that, we're also going to talk about organizational structures and systems as well as team dynamics. We will tackle these two when we get to leadership as well as human resource development and management. Basically, the entire first half of the semester when we talk about industrial psychology and organizational change and development. So that's the on the latter part of the semester. That's the last topic for this course. Okay, so basically we are CHED compliant in what we're doing. And we are more specific because I was able to divide the different um, the different subcourses into this course, and you'll be see, able to see that in our course outline under course overview of our online classroom. Other than that, we are also studying IO psychology because this is a part of your licensure exam. So in the Philippines, if you want to become a licensed psychometrician, you need to take the board exam for psychometrician. Okay, and IO will be one of the subjects. And the other subjects would be theories of personality, abnormal psychology, and psychological assessment. And IO is worth 20% in your board exam, okay, out of the overall 100%. Therefore, you need to do good in this subject, okay? You need to be interested in IO. You need to embody it. You need to love this subject because this will be one of the subjects that you will encounter in the board exam, okay? And I also anchored my discussion based on this on this um, what we call um, test blueprint okay or the, the test blueprint basically this is the if you have 100 items in the board exam this is the breakdown of the hundred items okay so a test blueprint in psychological assessment this is also known in layman's term as um, the test specification okay or the table of specification so what are the items that are expected to come out of your board exam so here are the following employee selections that's why i divided our topic on selection onto two lectures because that's worth 20 percent for 20 items that's a lot of items so if you're going to think about it training and development i also had a very long lecture about this one because that's another 20 items many um, performance evaluation and management i love this topic 15 items will come from that theories of motivation okay I discussed that in detail, and that's also for another 15 items. Group dynamics, I incorporated that in our discussion in leadership. And then the different functions involved in the human resource management. Basically, the entire first half of our semester. And then recognizing work-life balance, well-being in, work, in the workplace. That's why we also are going to discuss organizational change because it talks about compressed work week, working from home, and different ways to manage the stress of the employees. 
So basically, I hope that you know why we are studying IO psychology because eventually you will have to work and you will be encountering difficult um, workmates. You will have problems in the workforce. And as the psychology graduate in the workforce, they will ask you, what can we do about this situation? And I want you to be armed with the right knowledge, not just intuition, with the research and the findings. And you'll be able to objectively answer their questions and give suggestions. If your company doesn't love, re doesn't love research, then you can convince them that perhaps we can do an objective way, objective approach. We can adapt an objective approach in understanding things so that when we apply interventions, we will have objective data. We have needs analysis. We have documentation. And there will be a lot of, a lot of other realizations that you're going to have as you take this course. So I hope that you will be able to enjoy this course in IO psychology okay and for you to be able to do well in this course I suggest that you always watch the videos that I prepared for you and then you um, read in advance with using the book that I suggested to you okay and if you are part of my online classroom I already uploaded a um, some handouts that you can access under resources materials and tools which which can help you in in managing your way through this course so that's it i hope that you will enjoy this course and i want you to raise questions about it and you can always email it to me as your professor so that's it and enjoy the rest of the course and thank you so much